Justice Project um, and we're the organisation who carried out uh, a three month extensive investigation um, at two chicken farms in Suffolk. Uh, so both farms are free range and both farms supply chicken, uh, chicken to Tesco. Now we believe that both of these farms are RSPCA and we have documents showing that. Uh, the RSPCA are actually claiming that only one of those farms is currently RSPCA and it's on that farm that we filmed the horrendous catching of chickens which has not been filmed for many years in the UK. Um, so I'm going to leave Ayrton to talk in a bit more detail about the actual investigation but I just wanted to say thank you so much for everybody um, who came and thank you obviously to everybody on the Animal Justice Project team who have literally worked day in, day out for months on this investigation. Um, so I just wanted to say thank you for everybody for helping, for donating, for coming today and for actually speaking up to chick for chickens. So I'll hand you over to Ayrton who has our campaigner and then uh, Claire will speak from the Save Movement. Hello everybody. There's been a lot going on behind the scenes um, for four, like four or five months now. Um, We've got loads of different parts of the campaign yet to come out as well, uh, which we've been working on like day in, day out for weeks and weeks. Um, so just a little bit about the awards. Um, I did mention this to the few people that was here at the beginning. So the awards that are taking place behind us today, uh, these people that are driving in right now, these are the industry bosses. These are the people that are making millions of pounds every single year from exploiting over one billion chickens. Um, so we worked this out the other day, um, it's nearly 3 million chickens every single day just from broiler industry farms are being killed in the UK. This doesn't, this doesn't include any laying hens, um, it doesn't include any breeding hens, uh, this equates to uh, quite a few more million as well. Yeah, so part of the investigation, um, we decided to use chickens because chickens are the most exploited animals that we could argue. Uh, because of the um, the mass of chickens in the UK. Um, so we thought we could go down the intensive route. It's very, very easy for us to go and do investigations in these farms, uh, but we wanted to hold off for higher welfare labels such as Red Tractor and especially the RSPC Assured. Uh, the RSPC Assured account for only 4% of the chickens uh, which are sold in the UK, the other 1% being organic and 95% being factory farmed, intensively reared. Uh, so we thought if we go for the highest welfare possible, then it disproves any welfareist argument possible. We didn't want to go for intensively reared, and then people say, do you know what, I buy free range, which is obviously not the case because it's only 4% of the industry. Um, so yeah, as Claire mentioned, we found two RSPCA short farms. Uh, we've got the documents as well to show that show that they are approved, they're part of the scheme, they're both also Red Tractor and they both sell in Tesco. Um, so this is what our campaign has been aimed at. Um, so during the investigation we had cameras inside the farms themselves and then we had investigators go inside. So we've got a varying um, array of footage that we've got and photographs. 
Um, we've got some never, uh, never seen before footage, um, especially with the catching process. Um, I don't want to ramble on too much, but I'll quickly start from the day one with the chicks. Um, so we did three months, so we filmed a whole cycle of chickens inside these farms and with half a cycle either side. Uh, so we got every single part of the lifespan for these chickens. Um, so when the chicks first went in the, uh, into the sheds, um, we filmed them being thrown around and then later that day, they were being thrown from four or five, high, four or five feet in height and then later on in the day, um, there were workers going through, uh, workers going through, they were just walking, kicking the chicks as if they weren't even on the floor. These are day old yellow fluffy chicks, the most vulnerable babies that you could imagine. And these workers were just walking over them. Um, and we filmed that uh, some of these chicks were then later on, after eight hours, they were writhing in pain, they couldn't move on the floor. And then after eight hours that they finally died. Um, and so yeah, these chicks, they're shown no mercy at all. Um, the standards inside the farms are exactly the same as intensively reared. They're supposed to have um, you know, a really flashy life, um, a really plush existence. And this is what the people inside getting these awards um, are telling people. Uh, so we find, for example, um, the, to be free range certified, you're supposed to give the chicks um, natural daylight at least within the first seven days. We filmed um, the chicks inside these barns that were in there for 28 days and they had not a single hour of natural daylight. All of the windows were covered over with black plastic sheets. And then on the opposite of that, they're also supposed to have so many hours of darkness during the night so that they can adequately rest and this should be between four to six hours of constant darkness in the night. Um, we filmed at one point there was 52 hours of artificial light in a constant period, which means that you, these chicks could not adequately rest and this um, extra artificial light stimulates them to to continue eating and this brings me on to the slower growing breeds this is what they're promoted as they're promoted to grow slower so that they have less health issues and all of the health issues that you see on an intensively reared bird we found all of these on these slower growing breeds uh, they were getting stuck on their backs they were becoming lame so fast um, as you can see from our banner and it's what our mascot lucy is actually designed off um, is they're absolutely red raw, the ammonia is so high in there. Um, their feed sources, their food sources, um, the water sources, they were full of litter, they were absolutely disgusting, they weren't cleaned out the entire three month investigation. Um, and they, some of the drinkers you could barely get any water out of them. Um, and then so yeah, so this brings me on to the last part. So this is the catching process. Um, so this is the part that has never been filmed before. So we filmed workers carrying up to, a, up to half a dozen chickens in each hand, which is completely against all RSPCA standards and red tractor standards. Um, these chickens were then violently thrown into crates. They were thrown so hard into these crates that they then burst out of the top and were thrown back onto the floor. Uh, workers were saying every swear word imaginable to these chickens, throwing them around. They were being so, so aggressive. Um, Actually, since we've sent our reports to the RSPCA, the current standing is that they've suspended all of these workers. They've also suspended both of the farms because of how bad the abuse is. Uh, but this is not a one-off case. We want to show that this is the foul truth of the industry. We want to show that whether factory farmed, free range or organic, is 100% harm assured. Um, and this is the reality for these higher welfare birds and all chickens in the UK. First of all, thank you for Animal Justice Project for their absolutely incredible work on the Foul Truth campaign and for arranging this event. I begin with a quote from Leo Tolstoy. When the suffering of another creature causes you to feel pain, do not submit to the initial desire to flee from the suffering one, but on the contrary, come closer, as close as you come to him who suffers, and try to help him. I'm Claire, co-organiser for Hertfordshire Chicken Save, part of the, the Save Movement worldwide network of approximately 600 vigils, bearing witness to animals arriving for slaughter. There are 12 Save groups who bear witness to chickens in the UK and 36 worldwide. We don't 
document the next stage in their life after they've left the farm. Another stage that is hidden away in remote locations, down lanes and on industrial estates. And our stories are all very similar. When we stop each chicken truck and see the cargo, it's almost impossible to comprehend that there are between 5,000 and 9,000 individuals packed into the crates, stacked deep and high. We see those on the outside only. The stench is nauseating. These trucks arrive one after another, day after day, week after week, month after month, year after year. The scale of this industry is huge beyond imagination and lost within more than 975 million each year are the individuals, every single one. We see broken legs and wings, chickens unable to stand or steady themselves, encrusted in feces, soaked to the skin in urine, red raw ammonia burns on their bare skin, open wounds, hyperventilation, dehydration, panic, fear, the dying and the dead. We see babies. We spend quiet time with them, the only compassionate human contact they have. We document and evidence what we see, their suffering. We share their story far and wide and bring their misery from out of the country lanes and industrial estates and into the towns and communities, lifting the veil that the industry hides behind so effectively. We can speak from personal experience and share our own evidence, which brings a harsh reality and credibility to any conversation. We counter the false advertising and biased reporting that monopolises the media and the high streets. We use it as a way to educate on the broader issue of animal exploitation. The suffering does not stop with welfare violations. No amount of welfare legislation will stop the journeys to the slaughterhouses and regardless of the method used to kill them, those who are still able to will fight for their very lives. No amount of welfareism will change that. We must personally connect with the horrors that are reflected on these gentle creatures and expose every step of their short and misery-filled lives. It is up to us, people like you and me, to bear witness, to evidence and to never be silent. We owe it to the chickens to carry their voices, to make people see them, to acknowledge them, to be ambassadors for the truly amazing, sweet and complex animals they are, to bring change that's long overdue, to enable the masses to make the connection and to activate the compassionate interaction. Please support your local save vigil. If you have not attended a vigil, do make contact with your local group who will be happy to brief and support you. Check out current groups or start your own. Visit forsavemovement.org. It's a huge task we have ahead, but the world is starting to take notice. So let's give it something to take notice of and never be silent. And to all the animals, we see you, we love you, we're trying. Thank you. Um, if you haven't done if you haven't done so already, please visit the fowltruth.org. There are so many things that you can do on there. So you can order leaflets, you can go uh, door drop these leaflets. There's going to be some really really exciting additions going on in a few weeks' time as well. Some more um, more aspects of the campaign. Um, there's the petition to sign, so please sign that if you can. Please share it everywhere. Please tag in hashtag the fowltruth. Do you know? Do you know?